Claudia and I'm a tool librarian at the Missoula Urban Demonstration Project and today we're going to be going over how to assemble your mason bee kit. Uh, one of the reasons we decided to focus on mason bees is uh, a lot of people when they think about bees they think about these hive dwelling bees all in a hive um, but that is not the case for 75% of our North American bees. They are what's known as solitary nesters. So they will go out on their own and find a tunnel or a tube and lay 10 to 15 eggs there and just kind of let them do their own thing. They put food in there and they, the eggs will develop in those tubes over the summer and then over winter and come out in the spring. So this is just something that you can set out in your lawn that kind of creates a little habitat for those guys. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna go over what you have in your kit versus what you need to check out from mud in order to assemble your mason bee home. So first you'll have your block of wood. This is your body. This is what we will be drilling our tubes or tunnels into for those female bees to crawl into and start those chambers with their eggs. Uh, you'll also have two roof pieces. One will be shorter than the other, or so right there. Uh, and we'll talk about why that is. Uh, then you'll also have a mount that'll go on the back of your hive to help you place it once we're all finished. You should have three screws and that's everything that should be in your kit. In terms of what you need to check out from the library, you should have a screwdriver and a battery, okay? A battery charger, two to three drill bits because uh, different bees are different, different sizes. And then we should always have our protective eye gear. You can also use gloves if you're worried about that. All right, so again, we're gonna start off with drilling those holes into the body. Uh, we're gonna start by taking any of our bit pieces. It doesn't matter, we'll do a little bit with each different size. And what we'll do first is you're gonna grab the very end of the screwdriver here and kind of screw that. You'll see these pieces in the center start to open. You want those to be open far enough so that you can put this bit in there. And then you're gonna screw that tightly back on. And once it starts to click like that, that's as tight as it'll go, okay? So when you're drilling these holes, you wanna try and go as far down into the wood as you can. Um, preferably six inches is what I've heard is uh, best for these bees. And that just allows more room for them to put those individual chambers in for each of their eggs. Uh, fun fact, female bees have the ability to decide which sex they will lay before they lay it. So they will actually put their female eggs farther back in these tunnels, followed by the male eggs, and that just ensures a higher success rate for females in the next breeding season. So we're going to go ahead and drill these holes, and again, we're going to use a couple of different sizes, and we're just going to place them anywhere and everywhere here. Don't be too worried about overcrowding. If there's not enough resources in the area, like wet mud or uh, flowering plants, the bees won't go here because they'll see that there's too much competition and they'll go elsewhere. So go ahead and just put a good number in there. I'm probably gonna go for nine or so. So we've got our eye protective gear on now, our battery on the drill, and we're just gonna go ahead and hold our block pretty firmly there. Get this going. And you do have to kind of push down a little bit, so don't feel intimidated like you're pushing too hard. So we have finished drilling our holes. You can see them there. They don't have to be in any particular order. We've got them just kind of on there. Um, I think it's kind of a fun design. All right, so we're gonna start by putting our roof on. This has now become the front of our body because that's where the holes are. So what we're gonna do is take our shorter piece of wood, okay, this one here, and we're gonna take the flat side and align it with the edge on the body, you can see that there, and it's gonna be flush with the back. That way there's a little bit of overhang for the front and that'll just help 
if there's uh, rain and different things like that, keeping moisture out of these holes and again just kind of giving the eggs that are developing in there best chance of survival. So we're going to start by aligning that all up. We're going to take one screw. I've changed out my bit here. I'm just going to line this one up center. Right there. All right. So there is our first piece of the roof. All right, so we've got that first roof panel on there. So now we're going to take our second one. This one is our longer one here. And we're going to overlay that over the body and the piece of the panel that we just screwed in. That way our seam to our roof is on the side. And again, that's just going to reduce the amount of water that can actually seep into our wood here. So now that I've overlaid it there, it's flush with my back. I'm going to put my screw, I'm going to be conscious of where I put this screw so that I don't screw into that potentially. So I'm just going to line this up here. Cool. So our roof is all good. Cool. So now that we have our main house assembled, we are going to attach the mount on the backhand side. So we're just going to kind of line that up however we like. I'm going to take this screw. Cool. And that is our Mason Bee House. Um, now what I didn't talk about is the extras in your handout. If you wanted to sand and stain this, we should have done that before assembly. Uh, it just makes your life a lot easier. So you can just sand these pieces and then for the stain, uh, take a one to one ratio of your coffee grounds to water, hot water, put it in a cup and you can just put that uh, onto your newly sanded pieces. Uh, the more layers you put, the darker it'll be and that just gives it a little bit of a, a nice look if you want that more finished look versus a more rustic look. Um, in terms of other things you could put on the hive, I would recommend that you don't put any sorts of paints. Uh, there's research that suggests that the bees are less likely to go into these holes with those different sorts of smells. So coffee grounds is probably the most extreme I would go in terms of. All right, so now that we have assembled our mason bee house, it is time to put it up. Uh, it is recommended that you hang it about six feet up, and that's to uh, avoid different predators in a south-southwest facing direction. And again, just because the female bee is going to be looking for this in the summer, laying those eggs, those eggs will uh, become fully developed in these chambers, but will overwinter. So you want this to have as much warmth as possible throughout those winter months. And then they will emerge in the spring when you reach that 50 degrees Fahrenheit for several days in a row. They'll kind of be like, oh, it's nice and warm. So they'll come out there. So if we were looking to hang this, I would probably hang it about there. And then just using your mount and a couple extra screws, drill it in right there and just watch for it. Thank you for joining us for our DIY Native Bee House Kit video. If you have questions about the Missoula Urban Demonstration Project or our tool library, please visit www.mudproject.org and we hope to see you at our next workshop.